Hello, welcome to a new tutorial presented by DSC Charles VB. In this tutorial, we are going to see the larynx and the pharynx with the other organs involved in the neck. Now, we can see anteriorly the larynx. So, let's discuss about the larynx. The larynx, you see, above the on the larynx, you see the thyroid, the hyoid bone. Here is the, the, the thyroid cartilage. Here is the cricoid cartilage, and here inferiorly we have the different um, tracheal cartilages which are forming C loops, and posteriorly they are closing their muscles. So this are this is what we visualize here anteriorly. So we need to know that the <coughs> the tire the the, the, the the larynx is supplied by superficial sensation. And it's also supplied with motors and remote motor uh, motor supply. So the super the sensation of the larynx comes via the superior uh, laryngeal nerve and the inferior laryngeal nerve. And the muscular the muscle the, the motor supply comes via the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Now you need to know that. All these nerves originate from the um, the vagus nerve. So the superior laryngeal nerve, all of them are going to originate from vagus nerve. So we can visualize here. So this can be one branch. So let's come closer and visualize this. So this nerve here is the superior root of answer cervicalis. So superior root of answer cervicalis is only a root which is going to be used in the, the cervical plane. So it's not a nerve I'm involved with. So now let's see the larynx. So you have the thyroid, the thyroid gland. You have all this thyroid. This is the thyroid hyoid membrane in particular. So this is the, this in the anatomy of the this is the thyroid hyoid membrane. Here. This is the hyoid bone here. Now at this portion here, there is going to be a particular opening, and this opening is showing the portion where the um, the hyoid, the, the superior laryngeal nerve is going to enter, and the superior laryngeal nerve is going to supply sensation to the um, to the um, to the, the larynx above the vocal cord. Why the inferior laryngeal nerve is going to enter below and supply sensation below the vocal cord here. So it's going to enter this position here and going to give supply supply sensation below the vocal cord so let's visualize here so the vocal cord the question is what forms the vocal cord the vocal cord is formed when if i i fade this you will see some muscles which can be seen internally here so these are some muscles which are seen internally here so let's fade and we remove it so we hide so when we hide, we realize that this muscle here is going to be called the thyroaritenous muscle. So here still, I'm going to fade it. So and I will hide it. So you see this here will be the epiglottis. The epiglottis it will be found on the thyroid bone. So if I place back the thyroid, the thyroid cartilage, you're going to see the epiglottis connecting to it. But I don't want to see the epiglottis now. So we're coming back to our portion. So we realize that you have this. This is a thyroaretinous muscle. So this is a thyroaretinous muscle, and this muscle here is the thyroepiglottic part of the thyroaretinous muscle. So all of them are involved in the neck. So let's hide this particular part here, and we hide also this particular part. So we are going to have this. So is the this the mucosa of the larynx? So inside the mucosa of the larynx, you are going to hide and visualize what is inside. So what is inside, you realize that there are these two ligaments here. You need to know that there exists what we call the thyro, the, the cricothyroid membrane. The cricothyroid membrane is actually what is called the um, vocal cord. The superior part of the cricothyroid membrane is what is called the vocal cord. And now we have also the vestibular folds. The vestibular fold are above the superior part of the thyroid membrane or above the vocal cord. So here, at this point here, this uh, one here are called the vestibular ligaments. So we have the different vestibular ligaments, and below it, we are going to have the vocalis muscle, and the vocalis muscle are on the vocal cord. So you see that you see that you see very well, realize very well that this one here is a crico 
thyroid membrane so if i touch here you're going to you have the cricothyroid membrane at this portion and also here you also have the cricothyroid membrane here so this one are the cricothyroid membrane and superiorly to the cricothyroid membrane you're going to have the vocal cord now you also have vestibules of you have vestibular ligaments these vestibular ligaments are the false vocal cord so these are the false vocal cord and these are the true vocal cord which are below the vestibular ligament and what the the, 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 the true vocal cords are actually the upper extension of the cricothyroid ligament now posteriorly to the true vocal cord we have this and this is the arytenoid cartilage posteriorly to it and also this one is also the arytenoid cartilage yes superiorly to the arytenoid cartilage you have the corniculate cartilage and superiorly here you also have the corniculate cartilage so at this portion you have the airway epiglottic fold so you have the airway epiglottic fold which is connecting with the epiglottis here and also have the airway epiglottic fold on the other side so here will be equal to the laryngeal the, the laryngopharynx uh, this, are, this is the mucosa, so I can decide to hide the mucosa and remove it. So now, that mucosa was showing the, 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 the pharynx, so you can come back because when we are going to study the pharynx, you see that that mucosa is very necessary. Anteriorly to the, the, the larynx, you have the, posteriorly to the larynx, you have the pharynx. So the larynx is here anterior and the pharynx is here, actually. So that mucosa was the pharyngeal mucosa. So I can come back to visualize that particular pharyngeal mucosa. So now you have this pharyngeal mucosa which separates the larynx from the pharynx. So this pharyngeal mucosa is up there. Now we have. So we continue <clears throat> by having a muscle here above. So this muscle is going to be called the arytenoid part of the o, the the, o, the oblique arytenoid muscle. So you have this muscle here. Now, if you remove this thyro, um, this ligament here, you remove again on this other side. You hide it. You come and remove here. Hide. You realize that the, you have the cricoid, um, the, the cricoid um, uh, cartilage here. You see that the cricoid cartilage is small anteriorly. Anterior portion of the cricoid cartilage is small. But the posterior portion is very large and it's going to contain this arytenoid cartilage here. So you have again these muscles. The, the muscle here is going to be the vocalis. And this muscle, particular muscle here, is the, the thyroid muscle. And the thyroid muscle, you think already that is going to push the vocal cord and make sure that there's movement of vocal cord there's also this other muscle here the transverse arytenoid muscle which are going to cause an abduction of the um, the, the vocal cord of the arytenoid muscle so you have that you also have the different muscles which are involved here so we have already seen thyroid arytenoid muscle we have a transverse arytenoid muscle we have the posterior arytenoid muscle we cannot see from here so these are the different muscles which are involved in the larynx also in the larynx we have this muscle here called the cricothyroid muscle and the cricothyroid muscle is used to tense the vocal cord it's not actually using the movement of vocal cord the muscle which are involved in the movement of vocal cord are the chalvis arytenoid muscle the oblique arytenoid muscle the posterior arytenoid muscle and the thyroid arytenoid muscles these are the muscles which are involved in the movement of the vocal cord they all have arytenoid beside but the case of cricothyroid muscle they are used to tense the vocal cord so if you contract this you realize that what the cricoid the, the cricoid cord is going to come in front and it's going to push the the thyro the thyro cricoid the cricothyroid it's going to cause a movement level of the cricothyroid joint because there exists a cricothyroid joint on the lateral side here so it's, since it's going to contract it's going to push and tense the cricothyroid joint and causing the ten, the, the tension of the vocalis the, the vocal the, the true vocal cord so that's the action of the cricothyroid muscle this is why cricothyroid muscle is used in order for you to have a higher pitch voice here you have the oblique part of the cricothyroid muscle so all this you have visualized the thyroid and inside there you have the mucosa of the trachea 
posterior here you have um, you have the trachea the straight mo the, the the straight muscles of the trachea the trachealis muscle here so from here we can remove all this so the epiglottis is used to prevent food from um, entering into the thyroid when you are when you are doing deglutition so you hide now you can hide all this this is the higher epiglottic ligament so the higher epiglottic ligament is continuing contain is, is um, play, miss, making that the epiglottis should be connected with the um, with the the epiglottis it makes that the epiglottis should be connected with the higher bone so it's only when you are feeding that the epiglottis can shift now to close the um, the open the laryngeal opening so we hide it we come and we hide the different aspects which are involved with um, with the larynx so when we hide the different muscles we see that we see another muscle here so this muscle is what we call the oblique arytenoid muscle here this is the oblique arytenoid muscle and it's also used in the abduction instead of in the adduction of the vocal cord this one is using the adduction of the vocal cord the transverse arytenoid muscle you are using the adduction with the posterior arytenoid muscle but this one is used in the in the abduction so it closes the vocal cord together so we are going to hide it to remove all of them hide it so this muscle here is going to be the ari epiglottic um, epiglottic muscle so it's going to cause the epiglottis to come downward so during deglutition so we're going to hide it and this one still we are going to hide it the vocal cord we hide it so we remove again the cricoid cartilage hide it posterior to the cricoid artilage we have this muscle called the posterior crico arytenoid um, uh, crico arytenoid muscle or the posterior arytenoid muscle so we hide it again we remove this um, particular muscle here yeah. hide it so we have removed the basis so now from here we find ourselves when we enter up there we find ourselves inside the um, the pharynx so that will be the pharynx now the pharynx will consist of these constrictors we have this constrictor is going to be called the inferior pharyngeal constrictor we also have a superior pharyngeal constrictor above here so we also have superior pharyngeal constrictor which will be found above here so and we have the we, we have the middle pharyngeal constrictor so these are the different pharyngeal constrictors which can be seen which could be found on the pharynx so the pharynx consists of two main types of muscles we have the circular muscles which are the constrictor muscles superior middle and inferior constrictor and we have the the um, we have the the um, lo the longitudinal muscle and the longitudinal muscle are three main longitudinal muscles number one will be the, sti the, stilo the stilopharyngeus, number two is the sar sarpingopharyngeus, and the, the third one is the glossopharyngeus. Now, you need to know that all of the muscles of the pharynx are supplied by the vagus nerve. So, this is the vagus nerve here. So, all of the muscles of the pharynx are supplied by the vagus nerve. So, if you take the constrictor muscle, we come here and visualize the innervation, you will realize that when you isolate it, all the muscles of the vagus are going to be we have pharyngeal plexus of vagus nerve vagus nerve pharyngeal plexus of vagus nerve external and these are all of them are vagus nerve the other muscles involved are the middle constrictor and we have the superior constrictor so that those are their origin their origin are mostly on the um, pharyngeal the, we have the we have the con the, the the constrictor we have the raphid which is found which extend from the pharyngeal tubercle here yeah. We have a rough which extends from pharyngeal tubercle all through down here. So that's the origin of the different constrictors. And they are going to insert the superior constrictor is going to insert here on the um, the different parts here of the lateral is going to insert at the level of the medial plate of the terrigal, the medial terrigal plate. So this that is the portion where they are going to constrict the insert. And now the middle constrictor is going to insert on the on the horn, the greater horn, and the inferior one are going to insert directly on the pharynx. So now we also have the, the longitudinal muscle, which are sarpingo pharyngeus, grosso pharyngeus, and the last one which is going to be um, the last one which is going to be called the silopharyngeus. Now all of them are supplied by vagus except glossopharyngeus. So from the name. 
so these are all the muscles which are involved in the which are which are involved with the pharynx with the sensation of the pharynx you see the fat the the, the vagus nerve involved with um and with, with the, the pharyngeal plexus so from here we visualize all the muscles uh, all the far the pharyngeal muscle we, here we can see the parotid and here we can see um the anterior nerves the anterior nerves comprises of these cartilages here these cartilages are the this is a major ala and there is a minor ala the major ala has a central part the central part here we have the central part of the major ala and we have the ala portion so we have a circle, the, the central circles of, of this are ala portion. This other muscle, this other um, cartilages here are the, are the na lateral nasal cartilages, and here is the fibro fatty tissue. So laterally here, here are going to be the fibro fatty tissues. So these are fibro fatty tissues. So now these are different muscles, different muscles and different organs. You've seen the lar larynx and the trachea. So now. So from here we see this is a this will show it mark the end of the tutorial on larynx and pharynx in with the trachea of the neck. Thanks for your kind attention.